Jason Silva is here to tell us why we are all Cylons already and why that's not a bad thing. Hey guys, Anthony here for DNews. I got Jason Silva here with me, host of Shots of Awe, Brain Games, Transhumanist. Anybody who's not super familiar, what transhumanism is? Can you give us like the yeah. Cliff Notes version? Yeah, well my understanding is it's a philosophical sort of belief that we can use technology to transcend our limitations. So, you know, what it is to be human is really what it is to be transhuman. I mean, we didn't stay in the caves, we haven't stayed on the planet, gotcha. soon we won't stay with the limitations of our biology. So we've seen a lot of huge, huge developments lately that kind of fall into this. Uh, just this week, there was a scientist who was creating a carbon nanotube sensor that uses a single drop of blood to diagnose just about all diseases. And the idea is eventually this is gonna be in our body. And we've seen things like cochlear implants to help people right. hear, right. implants in people's brains that help them move robotic arms if they're paralyzed, everything up until like Google Glass. I think people get scared of this. Well, people have always been afraid of, of new technologies. Uh, there's this whole thing about either I don't know, Plato or Socrates, one of these guys that when writing was invented, the intellectual establishment of the time was like this writing thing is going to atrophy our brains because we're not going to have to remember anything. You know, right. Stephen Johnson wrote an interesting book called Everything Bad is Good for Us, where he talks about how watching television and playing video games like fires up the brain, problem solving, strategy skills, all these things are enhanced by these things that supposedly rot your brain. You know that our parents yeah. have been worried about. When the telephone was invented, people were like, what is this witchcraft? You know, like people so, have always been afraid. So here's the difference, though, man. Yeah. Like here's the difference: we invent writing and we have a pencil and we put it on paper. The pencil breaks. It's not inside my brain. Yeah. One of these. We so you're worried about, worried about being dependent on these technologies where it really matters. We worry about technology yeah. in terms of security and safety yeah. and failure, right? Yeah. And what happens when something like this yeah. is inside well, our body? Ray Kurzweil would argue that we back up our iPhones. Currently, we don't have a backup of our mind file, and that yeah. it's much more of a liability that we don't have a backing for the biological skin bag at all. We have technology in our bodies. We have organic technology. Sure. The heart is a pump, you know, and we have the nervous system. It's a network, you know, like, and these technologies could fail at any time. We at least have total control over these implants because we built them, we made them. We well, we're, they're work. only going to get better. You yeah. know, that's the thing about these technologies is that they're subject to these exponential trends, right? I mean, the supercomputer in your cell phone mm -hmm. is, and this is, you know, I, I repeat this all the time because it's such an amazing number, but it, it is a million times cheaper and a million times smaller, yeah. yet a thousand times more powerful than what used to be a half a building in size supercomputer in Stanford that was $60 million. So well, you have a billion fold increase in price and performance and miniaturization. That's going to continue exponentially. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about that because you bring up the smartphone, and yeah. there's an argument that's going on already because people mm -hmm. got really scared about Google Glass. People get really scared about using the internet to remember everything. Yeah. But we're kind of there's a, there's this theory that we're already augmented, right? Like we we're already are. cyborgs. We already are. I mean, there's a there's a cyborg anthropologist called mm -hmm. Amber Case. That's like such a great job to have. And, and she has a TED talk about this and this whole idea that we are already cyborgs. And she says, you know, every time you create you make a telephone call mm -hmm. or a Skype call, you're basically creating a techno-social wormhole that is like creating a rupture in space and time so that you can communicate with another mind across like oceans and continents in real time. Kevin Kelly says, can you imagine anything more addictive than being a god. And he was like spot on. I mean, I know it sounds heretical, but basically what he's saying is that we are as gods and might as well get good at it, which is what Stuart Brand used to say too. So it's just like, you know, let's just, let's embrace this. Like we are the cutting edge of the evolutionary paradigm, at least in the part of the universe that is observable to us at the moment. And it's our job to take control of the starship and to control our evolutionary destiny. Let's take a look at a timeline. We're, okay. we're, we're like, we've got people, we're scared right now. Yeah. We don't want to put this inside ourselves, but right. people don't even want to wear Google Glass. When do you think we get over the hump? When do you see this? A lot faster than what you think, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, can you, today, you think anybody could imagine life without like Facebook or Twitter or even their smartphones? I mean, can you imagine life without yeah. that? I mean, no. these things are, have become sort of a part of our daily routine. Again, like our second skin. So I think that you'll be surprised how quickly it becomes normal. Do you think it's gonna be when Google Glass looks like regular glasses, when it's contact lenses? What, when do you think well, people these technologies, go, okay, these, these, these technologies get, they get better and they get cheaper, you know? Because mm -hmm. one of the pushbacks that people often say is like, oh, well, these technologies, these amazing things you talk about are only gonna be available for the rich. 
And then Kurzweil says, yeah, right, like cell phones, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the cell phones get better, and more and more people across the planet can get them. You talk about the rising billion, these people coming online for the first time, buying smartphones, doing e-commerce on their phones. This is changing economies. This is yeah. changing the world. So, I mean, this stuff, these tools are used to improve humanity, and the better they get, the cheaper they get, the more accessible they get. That's the pattern that's really at play here. So, I think it's inevitable. I think it's just evolution. So, there you go. All the kids, all the kids will be cyborgs at the very least. Yes. Like 20 years from now, probably. Yes, huh? we are already cyborgs. We're wearing here. This is my second skin, my robotic <laughs> clothing, you know, my phone in my pocket. You have a whole channel where you just talk about stuff like this. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Shots of Awe, youtube.com slash Shots of Awe is, is my YouTube channel where I put out these like espresso nuggets of techno rapture every every week where I try to, to distill these inspiring ideas and, and basically bottle inspiration. I tell people it's kind of like a souvenir of the ecstatic state. Right? Subscribe to the channel, watch the show. Jason, thanks for coming by. Thanks, man. brother. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.